Um, good morning. I was gonna talk to you about um, testing an oxygen sensor um, since they're, they go bad. It's a regular maintenance. So on my car, I have um, one of these oxygen sensors. It's just a one wire. It's a old car. So um, yeah, as you can see, a normal oxygen sensor, it switches pretty fast, right? And if it's worn out, it, it switches very slow. And by switching, I mean it goes from 0.1 volt to 0.9 volt. And um, so that's pretty low voltage. It's even less than one volt. And um, um, I want to talk to you about... Um, so this car is a six cylinder and um, yeah, it has six pistons and six cylinders. And um, um, on my car, number one cylinder is over here. And um, the, the reason it's important to know number one cylinder is um, um, if you if you, you, on these old cars you got to do timing. That means you got to loosen the distributor and turn turn them. So and also on newer cars they tell you like bank one cylinder one bank two cylinder two. So you got to know um, which one is bank one because so. So B1, S1 on, on the scanner, it means the oxygen sensor which is on the, on the side of bank 1 cylinder. And the bank 2, sensor 2 is the one on, on, the, on the opposite side of bank 1. And then there's also, uh, after the catalytic converter, there's a bank 1 sensor 2. Now, um, um, the, 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 there is an easy way to find out which one is bank one and um, you look at the valve cover and the one that is closer to the, to the crankshaft to the end to the front of the engine that's cylinder one so and also on um, on like a, let's say um, see over here it tells you um, Like if it's in line, that the f number one is always the, the front one. And um, on an eight cylinder, so all except Ford, Mercedes and uh, Cadillac, it's, it's on the right side. If it's a Ford, Mercedes, Porsche, Cadillac, it's on the left. Um, let's see. So... For Ford V6 is, is over there, Peugeot, Porsche, Audi, and Saab. Okay, so now um, we move on to, to the car. Now, if see, the, there's the six cylinder, and um, so one oxygen sensor is right there. And the other one is back underneath that guy. And the, the thing is, if, if your car, see this car is, um, it's, it's OBD1 certified. So when it's OBD1 certified, the, the car's computer doesn't tell you when the oxygen sensor is worn out. So you gotta do this uh, test that I'm showing you to, um, to find out if, if it's worn out or not. And uh, this car, as it says, is three liter and it's three V, three V, yeah, three V Z, three F V Z V engine. And um, okay, let me go and start the car up. So, as you can see, this car has 125,000 125, miles on it. And as I was saying, this car is from 93. 
so um, and then if you come over here on on Toyotas they have like a breakout box and uh, see there it says OX OX1 OX2 that means oxygen sensor 1 oxygen sensor 2 right there there OX1 OX2 so um, basically one is here and, and there and um, let's see So as you can see, it's cycling between um, the lowest it goes to is like 0.2 and the highest is like 0.75, yeah 0.75. So it keeps doing that, it goes from low to high, low to high, low to high, um, yeah point all the way down to 0.25 and as high as 0.7 so this is a good oxygen sensor because I, I, I changed it not that long ago so I'm gonna switch it to bank 2 so this one goes to 1 lowest is 129 and the highest it goes to is point six 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 nine point six nine yeah point one three one all the way to point six eight and um, yeah point point six nine point one five seven and as you rev it up, it's gonna switch faster. So when you um, let me switch it to the other bank, we try that one. So as you can see when you rev the engine up it switches faster. So I turned the car off because um, anyway we, we've done with the oxygen sensor testing. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about this car. Um, I got it maybe 2007 and back then had 80,000 miles on it. So now it's got um, it's got 125,000 miles and um, the car was overheating when I got it so right afterwards the head gasket started leaking so uh, this mechanic he changed he fixed it for me and since then I've done a tune-up at 80,000. That's um, so. This car still has a, a, um, what's that? A, a, a 
cap and rotor and distributor cap. So I've changed that at, um, at 80,000. And again, I did it not so long ago at maybe 124,000 miles. And I've changed oxygen sensors. The radiator, I've changed it twice or maybe even three times. Um, what else? Um, well, the rubber, all the rubber hoses I've changed. Um, I, I need to change the um, brake master cylinder, um, but it's not that bad. I can keep driving for a while. So I've done brake job on it. Um, um, yeah, w water pump I've changed uh, right here. And there I was telling you about um, the, how to find the cylinder number one. See where this one, the val valve cover ends. And if you come scoot all the way over to the other side, um, th there's the, the valve cover right there. And it keeps going this way. So this is cylinder number one because the valve cover extends towards the front of the engine where all the belts are. So you can see there's a valve cover there and if you come right over here, it already ends. So the valve cover over here keeps going towards the front. So, that's, so that one is, is cylinder number one. And then um, what else I was gonna say? Oh yeah, lately um, it wasn't running really good. So at idle it was missing. Um, so the problem was the, let me see, yeah, right, these guys over here, they call them, um, uh, they call these guys fuel injectors. Yeah, right there, see, F they call them fuel injectors. So this car got, three in the front and three in the back and um, and mine was the one in the middle in the back was bad and uh, I had to figure out the old way with the stethoscope um, and I put the stethoscope on there and, and that one wasn't working so and valve cover gasket obviously I've changed that and then also underneath the, the, the distributor, there's the distributor right there. Um, the distributor shaft has an O-ring on it. And um, that O-ring leaks and the oil leaks uh, underneath it. So, um, and this car has um, what they call hydraulic, hydraulic fan. And the problem was when I got it, um, some somebody had uh, disconnected. Uh, there's a connection back here. Um, back here, there's a connection to the um, uh, the steering steering pump, and um, this actually the the steering pump it turns the 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 fan. The hydraulic fan so the electric when the electrical connection is disconnected from there this fan always turns at slow speed so the car overheats so that was the problem with this car and the other things that I've changed with this car um, timing belt I've changed the engine mounts like down here uh, I don't think it shows too well yeah right there the engine mount front back I've changed and this guy I've already changed this guy this engine mount so that's basically it I hope you like this video and it, it it shows you how to find if your oxygen sensor is good thanks